Hey guys, and welcome back. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we did a first appearance video, and it went really well. So we're back with another kind of uh, collecting comics for beginners video. This is a sad one. <clears throat> this week, we're going to be talking about deaths in comics. But first, um, we're kicking off a new contest today. When we hit 1,500 subscribers, we're going to be giving away this... Uh, this is Molina cover, right? Yeah, it's the 1 in 25 ratio. For 1 in 25. One. It's double signed by Donny Cates and Ryan Stegman. So uh, be sure you're getting all your friends to subscribe, share and everything. When we hit 1,500 subscribers, we're going to be doing a drawing for this. So how does that work? How, when we do the giveaway, do we just have some posts where people will have to comment to be able to enter? or? <clears throat> what we'll do is we can look, we can pull up the list of our subscribers, okay, and we can Just random number and... generate, gotcha. yeah, and then so we'll pick a, we'll pick somebody, and then we'll do a video of announcing the winner. Oh, that's cool. I like that. I'm still new to all of this uh, YouTube stuff. Yeah, so it's a different world. It is. It's. I mean, you know, when we hired you back in August, it was. I don't understand why what we're doing, but I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> so. But let's talk about deaths. Um, deaths are significant in comic books. Um, but as a veteran collector of almost 30 years, deaths can be both significant and insignificant at the same time. Because the running joke when I was a kid was the only character that ever stayed dead was Bucky Barnes. And look who's not dead anymore. And look who's not dead anymore. Because, I mean, he died back in the, what would it be, the 50s? Mm -hmm. And he had stayed dead for 50-plus years. And, like, he was the one character that felt like he was off-limits to break back from the dead. And then, you know, they went ahead and did it with the Brubaker run um, in Captain America 6. Mm -hmm. and, you know, but, you know, so when that happened, there really was no more... Uh, there was no more running joke. I mean, everybody's been brought back. Yeah, at least um, in some form. So what, what character do you want to cover first? Because there's so many significant characters. I mean, you of course have displayed the, the, the death of Superman, which is probably one of the biggest overprintings of any book ever. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you have the death of Peter Parker, kind of. Kind of. Kind of. Uh, so what, which, what, what character do you want to begin with? What publisher... Uh, because I believe deaths run different courses in each publisher. Let's talk about Superman, because I think Superman is... I think just about everybody knows about the death of Superman. Yes. And, you know, it's kind of a, a joke in itself that everybody has th this cover. And it still goes, if you can find it sealed in the poly bag, it's still a $20 book. Yeah. Um, which is just crazy to me, because I bet you there was over a million copies printed of the death of Superman. Um, so I wasn't a DC kid when this happened, when this mm -hmm. event happened, but I know that like, I remember I picked up that cover, uh, I picked up the cover and you know, it was sad. And then, you know, you went through the course of like, how long did he stay dead? Uh, I feel like everyone was trying to pick up the mantle of Superman. It was Steel and it was Superboy, it was Supergirl. Yeah. So was... they had that whole arc with all the Supermen. Right. And they were fighting over which one was the most legitimate. But then, I don't think it was too long before he came back as the red Superman and the blue Superman, and that was weird for a little bit. I thought he came back as, uh, in the whole black suit thing. Like, I think that the, the, the red and blue Superman thing actually was five or six years later. Okay. Uh, I'm not for sure on See, that. all this was way before, this was actually before my comic nerd, baby. yeah. Yeah, we baby. Because you were born in what? 90, 90, 91. 91. So, and the death of Superman happened. You mind if I open your book? No, go ahead. Okay. Oh, 93. So you were two when he died. Yeah. Um, actually, it would have been... If you don't know, when you see a month on a comic book, it says, this is a whole other thing. Um, if it says January, that means it actually came out in November of 92. So. Interesting. So the reason why they did that, and this is, we'll, we'll cover a whole, like, what, how to read barcodes, because barcodes can tell you everything you need to know mm -hmm. in a comic book. And then, you know, why, why they did that, just a bunny trail, is because back in the direct market, when they would put comic books in gas stations and supermarkets and all of that jazz, um, they put January, when it came out in November, 
to tell the store they could destroy the book in January. Okay. So it was it was a way of saying this book is ready to go. Get rid of it. Mm -hmm. Strip the cover and return it for returns. Uh, and they've been doing that since the '40s. That's why it's always been that way. That's it was similar always, to what the magazine industry does. Correct. So it, you know, that's why when people always uh, put what book came out on your birthday when you were born, I'm all like. You all have this wrong. Yeah, you're all off by you're about two months. You're all off <laughs> by two months. So, because it, it's not about the actual, like, if it says January, it was not January. It was actually November. So you got to go back two months, and then that is the correct. Right. Unless you're getting the actual physical street date, and then that's different. Right. Um so when you get to Superman, it was a huge deal. It was the first time a major character that I can think of actually died in comic books. I mean, it made the news. Oh, um, yeah. I mean, it was all over the place that, you know, Superman died. Superman was an iconic character. He's still an iconic character that nobody reads his comic books. Uh, sales reflect that. Um, but uh, it was an important uh, time in comics because after he died, I kind of felt like that became a thing. Like, people just started dying off. Like, let's kill characters. Our numbers go up. Yeah. Um, people start chasing these books. It was shocking. Yeah. It was... Especially when, back when nobody did it. It's, right. not, it's not as shocking anymore. Characters die all the time now. Yeah, characters die now, and it's just like... Mm, They'll be back in six back. months, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, with, when it comes to this moment, it's, it's a moment of nostalgia for most people at this point. Mm -hmm. New collectors want to buy it because, oh, it's the death of Superman. They're never going to read it. It's going to stay in the poly bag. It's going to be protected. But old collectors, I really feel like they just pick it up now almost like picking up the first appearance of Darkhawk. Mm -hmm. Or, um, you know, the Venom Lethal Protector, which for, should have no actual collectability. But it does because people just pick it up to pick it up. Right. Because there was a million copies printed of Lethal Protector. So there's really it's, it's one of those deals. Everybody remembers when they had their right. copy as a kid that they probably don't have anymore. It's like X Force One. Uh huh. Back when I had the first store, it was all about how many copies of X Force One could I actually collect. Yeah. Um, and now that book is actually significant if it has the Deadpool card in. I'm like, oh my lord. <laughs> um, so Superman was the first time a major character in my time of collecting. Because I mean, I started collecting in '92. So this happened like right after I started collecting. So I was still an X-Men fanatic. So mm -hmm. this was more of just a side thing that happened. And I saw it and I bought it and I read it. Um, but then I never read anything after that. It just, and their numbering system back then was so weird. They had a little shield with the number. Mm -hmm. and I was like, I don't know how to follow that. Yeah. Um, but so Superman was the first major character to die in comics. And in, in this way in, of the modern era. Um, and I believe it's significant, and it does carry some value. Um, typically, like I was telling you before we started, um, when a character dies to me in the modern era, it's not about the character dying. That book is going to carry some, some weight for the first few weeks that the book is out, but typically it's going to drop back down to around the normal prices of a comic book. It's mm -hmm. no longer going to be valuable after about two or three weeks. But what's important about when a major character dies and the books that I would say to pick up is who picks up the mantle of that character. Yeah. Um, so we're going to, we're not going to go to Spider-Man yet because that's a whole complicated story. Well, and going with that, that might have been, you know, like we were just talking about this before, um, not, there was not one clear character to pick up the Superman mantle. Right. There were several and they kind of squabbled over it. Correct. But, but back in the, the Brubaker run of Captain America, when at the end of Civil War, uh, Sharon Carter basically puts three in Cap and kills him. Mm -hmm. um, it was, who's going to pick up the mantle of Captain America? Mm -hmm. Was it going to be Bucky Barnes? Was it going to be Falcon? And that, I think it was Captain America 25, that that was the big issue of Falcon picking up the mantle as Captain America. And that book is the valuable book out of the two. Like, when he right. dies... I remember it being a hot book when he died, but now it's, and it's only valuable because of the MCU, because they did the Falcon Winter Soldier. Right. The Falcon picking up the shield, becoming Captain America. That's, that's, 
the value of comic books is so movie driven it's insane yes as um, soon as they make an appearance on screen the, everyone goes and searches for that issue correct and but the the and the, but that's been the way in comics for a long time it's when somebody dies who picks up the mantle um, because we all know whoever died is coming back. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think we touched on this a little bit. Um, when Captain America died, I told everybody that by the time the first movie comes out, Steve Rogers will be Captain America again. And sure enough, he was Captain America again. When Peter Parker died in Amazing Spider-Man 700, um, I told everybody, because everybody was freaking out. Like, everybody was so mad about Peter dying in 700. And then Superior Spider-Man well, taking off. I told everybody, I was like, he has a movie. Marvel doesn't create confusion. Peter Parker will be back as so Spider-Man. I think the movie that was, um, you know, much like everyone thought Bucky was this untouchable character to bring back, Peter was kind of this untouchable character to live. Well, but I think, because, Super- because I think Superman changed that, though. Well, I, I would mean that because um, Spider-Man is like Marvel's... There's Marvel's cash cow. Right. So you don't kill off your cash cow and leave them dead. So, But the thing about it is, in the way that they approached the killing of Peter Parker, they didn't kill his body. No. They killed his mind. Um, and Superior Spider-Man is a whole nother awesome talk that we can have. Um, because... In in seven hundred, if you haven't read it yet, you've had about you've had almost a decade. Uh-huh. That's on you. Um, that's just on you. So, um, so Doc Ock takes possession of Peter Parker's body by getting rid of like Peter Parker. Right. They and they so Doc Ock is dying. Right. And they switch brains. Correct. And so Peter dies in Doc Ock's body. Right. That's, that's how they play it off. And then that's when Superior Spider-Man starts. Which was one of the best runs it of It was Spider-Man. fantastic. Yeah, it was fantastic. It was only about, what, six months long? Because the movie came out that same uh, summer. It lasted 32 issues. But it was, it's two a month. Yeah, but I think, it, I, mean, I think it took about a year and a half to get Did through it? the run. It couldn't have because uh, 700 was December. And I think the Amazing Spider-Man came out July of that year. Mm. That year. Let's look. I'm going to Google this while we're talking about it because... Either way, it was not very long. Amazing Spider-Man. Because I thought actually it was May of 2014. Because that's when I started for Hastings and the new Spider-Man 1 came out. Okay. You, I th- you might have been... One of the Amazing Spider-Mans came out that summer. Um, or in the summer. Well, that can't be right. Oh, Okay. So, it must have been Spider-Man 2, because okay. Spider-Man 1 came out in 2012. That's right. So, it was Amazing Spider-Man 2 that was the that had the to be movie. out by that time. Mm-hmm. So, there's been so many Spider-Man movies at this point. Yeah. Um, so, with this story, like we knew that Peter Parker was going to be back as Spider-Man at some point. Because of the movies. Because of the movies. Because the Marvel and Disney do not create confusion in readership. They, they just, it's not like Justice League or any of these DC movies. It's just convoluted mess. Marvel makes sure that if a new reader comes in and wants to read about Peter Parker as Spider-Man, there's a Peter Parker as Spider-Man sitting on the wall. Mm-hmm. Um, when the Miles Morales Spider-Verse movie came out, there was a new Spider-Verse comic book ready to, or new Miles Morales comic book ready to go sitting on the wall um, that did not affect Peter Parker's life at all and I don't believe that Amazing Spider-Man 700 was the first time they killed Peter Parker the ultimate Spider-Man died before that the ultimate Spider-Man died a long time ago right so this is technically and he has stayed dead like that particular yes. ultimate character has stayed dead like Almost all of the characters from the Ultimate Universe, when they died, they were dead. Well, and I think that's the purpose of the Ultimate Universe, right. is to do stuff that they couldn't do in the main continuity. Right. Um, but I kind of feel like sometimes they would experiment with an idea. Um, to see if it would take off. Like, Miles took off, and so they found a way to bring him into the 616. Right. Because, um, you know, with the Scroll invasion, 
uh, everybody thinks the Scroll Invasion was this big epic storyline. Well, they kind of experimented with the Scroll Invasion back in Uncanny X Men, like three seventy five, mm-hmm. when Wolverine was killed, and they ended up being a Scroll. Yeah. And then they had to do like test everybody else in the X Men to make sure that they weren't Scrolls as well. Um, and that was that ties in because it was a death. Mm-hmm. It ended up being a scroll, and they they've tied scrolls to deaths a few times now. It's an easy way to reverse it's, it. It's an easy reverse. Like Captain America, his death was death was tied to I believe it was essentially magic bullets that would displace Captain America outside of time. Yeah, he went through weird time travel to get back and yeah. won, and then at one point he was in an alternate universe that was, um, like ruled by this weird offshoot of Zola. Right. And see, like, but that's the thing about comics is, like, if they don't want those characters dead, they'll find a way to bring them back. Yeah, I mean, um, it does I not mean, have to magic make... Magic bullets? <laughs> it does on, not man. have to make any sense. It doesn't have to make any sense. It's comic books. Um, I remember, for me, one of the emotional deaths for me um, was when um, they finally found the cure to the legacy virus in, in X-Men. Because mm-hmm. Are you familiar with the legacy virus? No. So the legacy virus was introduced by Strife in the Executioner songs. Okay. Um, it was his legacy on basically it would make the mutant uh, mutants' powers misfire. Okay. And it killed off a lot of cool mutants. Like it killed off uh, Maverick, or it was killing Maverick. Um, it's been twenty years, thirty years, so I'm having problems remembering which all characters it actually targeted. Uh, it killed uh, Magic. That's actually what killed her. Okay. Um, so there's just a list of characters that it slowly... Um, uh, Madrick, uh, uh, Multiple Man, it kind of got him in a way, but he found a way out of it by du- duplicates and all that jazz. Um, but this virus would go through and basically started killing off mutants, and it only affected mutants. Um, so they finally found a cure to the legacy virus. Uh, but essentially, someone was going to have to take it, and it was going to kill them. And... Colossus was the one that like snuck into the laboratory because Colossus at this point was so beat up. His sisters died. Mm-hmm. His family is dead. Um, he'd gone through this time where he actually left the X-Men to go be part of Magneto's Ecologies um, and he was just broken. And so he just basically did it at a like, yes, I'm saving all mutant kind, but it kind of felt like it was more about suicide. Like, yeah. He would just rather be dead than have to face the world anymore. Um, so he did that. Uh, he gave himself the shot. He cured the legacy virus, but he died. Um, that was one of the most m- like memorable. Like I think I almost cried when he died because I've always liked Colossus. Um, and there's been other deaths like uh, Nightcrawler trying to save Hope during uh, one of the storylines. Um, Topian, I don't remember. The Sentinels basically barricaded off. They were after mm-hmm. Hope and. Basically, uh, Nightcrawler teleported in the wrong spot at the wrong time, and Nimrod's arm ended up through his chest. Yeah. Um, super sad. Super sad. Um, but we, we keep bringing up these characters, and none of these characters have ever stayed dead. No. Um, and in fact, I was super impressed with Marvel on when they killed Wolverine. Because um, they killed Wolverine in the fall of 2014. Mm-hmm. And... He stayed legitimately gone until about... They started the hunt for Wolverine stuff, I believe, in 2018. And he legitimately didn't get his own title until last year. Like, he was... They did some, like, Old Man Logan stuff between them, They did some Old Man Logan stuff, but that was alternate reality kind of stuff. That was the the stuff they experimented with with McNiven, um, Malar Run, Mm -hmm. um, that was so famous and popular. Um, but he stayed dead legitimately for almost four years. And I was impressed that Wolverine stayed gone. But during that time, they went through the idea of what would, what would it be if X-23 was Wolverine, if Dakin was Wolverine. Well, and um, that was also a time period where they were really fighting with Fox. Yes. And so it was not uncommon for the X-Men to kind of be well, they shoved were the, to the side in the books. They were redheaded stepchildren of comics at, the, at this point because... Not because it didn't make Marvel money, but because Disney couldn't stand the idea of promoting something they didn't own. Right. Um, and so when it comes to the death in comics, as a collector, 
I don't see long-term collectability in investing in comics. I see that as a quick flip. You buy it, you sell it fast. Because especially with like Marvel and DC, when those mm-hmm. characters are gone, you know they're coming back. Um, but I see the investment is who takes up the mantle while they're gone. Right. Now, we did talk that Spider-Man 700 was a little bit of an exception there. Well, it was an exception because Peter Parker, um, the body of Peter Parker did not die. It continued. Mm-hmm. It just had a new mind uh, to take, take its place. And, it, you know, that all happened in, in the same book. So it was, it was the death and the new mantle in the same book. Right. And then if you're really following the story, like the follow-up book is actually Daredevil 22 mm-hmm. versus Superior Spider-Man 1. Um, so when you, when you look at Amazing Spider-Man 700, I believe it's still, it's a super valuable book because one, it was one of the first really $10 books that Marvel put out. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of people shied away from it because it was $10. Gosh, I remember the day it came out, uh, by the by that evening No, it's eight dollars. By that evening it was uh up to like thirty or forty bucks. Mm-hmm. Just the, the A cover. And I still think that the book itself, like I know that the the one in one hundred or whatever it is, the um the the ratio variant to that. Is it the like one with a, the buildings down the side? No, that's the skyline variant. Because they, they homage that one all the time. They have a Venom 200 that's like that. Yeah, the Skyline variant's been done a lot. But they did another one. It was um, a Ditko alternate cover. Like mm-hmm. an art that was rejected back in the day that they went back and kind of redid. And that variant's like a couple thousand bucks now. Okay. Um, so when it comes to Spider-Man, it was just a different feel altogether. Because you have... It wasn't a true death. And if you read through Superior Spider-Man, and I will keep saying that if you have not read Superior Spider-Man and you call yourself a Spider-Man fan, you were, you were neglecting one of the best Spider-Man stories. Because during that first, what, 12 issues of, of Spider-Man... punched off Scorpion's jaw and all kinds of stuff. Not only that, Peter truly became the villain. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was what was so significant to me because... As we explained, like the personality, or the, the well, minds were was, swapped, but Peter was still in his own body. It was strange, though, because, you know, he was the villain, but he was... Doc, as Spider-Man, actually did try so hard to do good. And he did so much for Peter's life. Uh-huh. Like, that he, was got his, of, he got his stuff together. He, got, <laughs> he, he graduated college, got some businesses set up, set up some patents, got in a relationship that was stable. <laughs> um, you know, became like... He kept saying, man, Peter was such a flake. Mm-hmm. He was such a flake because he, he invented technology that didn't mean he had to sacrifice his personal life. Like, he didn't have to always be on the hunt for, like, his little spider robots did it. Mm-hmm. And then he just went wherever the spider robots told him to do. And he didn't take on every job. He's like, eh, that's something somebody else can do. Mm-hmm. Um, but in, in the fight over who controlled... Um, the mind of Peter Parker, like Peter becomes so obsessed with being in control that he was willing to sacrifice a little girl that mm-hmm. like he, he had caused so much disruption that Doc Ock was trying to be the hero and Peter was so concerned about himself that he was willing to let people get hurt or die. Yeah. And to me, that was what made the story so special is because you did have one person trying to redeem himself in a way I mean, it was still selfish ambition, but the other person was so desperate that they were willing to do whatever it took to just get back in control. Yeah. Um, I do wish through some sort of multiverse way they would bring Superior Spider-Man back to the main universe. And they have in ways, but it never took off. Like, readers didn't read it. Oh, yeah. Um, like they've, they've brought Superior Spider-Man back in, and just readers were not reading it. Um, so the dumbest death in comics to me... Um, this is by, like, to me, it's the, like, I, I hate it with every grain of who I am when it comes to this particular death. It was during the Civil War stuff, um, Aunt May got shot. Mm-hmm. And I believe she died. Um, 
I have to go back and reread it. But she got shot. It was from Peter exposing who he was. And it caused Peter and Mary Jane to give up their marriage. And it just pissed me off. Like, and I know it did a lot of readers too, because like, they just sacrificed their marriage to bring back uh, May, Mm -hmm. to let her come back and not have been wounded and shot. And I thought that was the dumbest thing ever. I want to like, and Marvel never wanted Peter to be married to begin with. It was it's a thing. No, like yeah. they, they don't want their characters to be married. They don't want them to have children, because you start doing that stuff, and the characters have to start aging. Right. Well, um, and they're comic books. You do, you want the character to be able to do anything because you have to make the story last for eighty years. But what made Peter Parker so significant as a character? Is you lived with his life decisions. Mm-hmm. You know, you lived when Gwen died, you felt for him. When he married Mary Jane, you celebrated with him. When they lost their baby, you mourned with him. Uh, I mean, the 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 not ever having enough money and always having to scrape together to make it. Peter was a personable character because of that. And then they took Mary Jane away from him. Mm-hmm. And it just changed the way the character worked. And they made that deal with Mephisto. And then you find out it was actually Mary Jane that made that deal. It wasn't actually Peter Mm -hmm. Parker. But I just thought that was the dumbest way that they could have escalated the story. Because that was a lot of who Peter was. Well, and that's one thing I don't like when they do is they, they throw in this stuff for shock to make the story shocking. Right. But by the end of the story, it's all reset. I like it, so well, that's one thing. Tra- I- they're still trying to fix the Mary Jane thing in Spider-Man, though. Well, that's something they... I'm more talking about the May thing. Okay. Because uh, they really don't want to fix the Mary Jane thing, I don't think. But they keep playing with it. They keep playing with the idea that they're going to get back together. And they're going to be together, and... I think that's just more of a... Uh, puppy dog Pete chasing the one that got away and he's always going to be chasing her Um, but like give it some time to breathe to let that settle in before you reset everything right Uh, so you might not even count this one as a death but in the current Venom run Eddie Brock dies in like 32 or 33 but he's back by the next issue of Venom yeah and so you know I don't even know if you'd actually count that as a death but he was dead on the table yeah, I don't think you can count it as a death because if you're not dead for more than an issue, are you dead at all? Right. Um, so I don't, I don't count that as a death. Um, but there is another pretty significant thing going on in the world of the mutants right now with Krakoa. Yes. Um, I believe that Hickman has made mutant life's very cheap because if you die and you are on this universe, mm-hmm. or 616... They can bring you back, and it's if you've never died at all. You just come back, and you're fine. And it's like they they upload your memories to a server, mm-hmm. and then when you die, they download it to a clone. And it's like, and the way it works is like, every so many hours they upload everybody. I mean, that was the whole thing in Hellions. It's like where, that. Where, um, what was that Netflix sci-fi show? Um, was it uh, after the? Uh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Um, the the first season was so good and it had Anthony Mackie in the yeah. second season. Um, and they, uh, Alter Carbon? Yes. Same concept. Yeah, same concept. Like, you, you live, you die, you get reset. As long as what's in your neck doesn't get damaged before it sends it off. Well, and even then, they could they could bring you back from a previous right, it's just download. You'd just be missing a few hours of memory. And I feel like that's where we've gotten with mutants, like... You can go on suicide missions because they're not suicide anymore. Mm-hmm. It's going to hurt like hell when you die, but then you're going to come back and it's just going to be what it is. And that was kind of what happened with the X of Swords is something happened with, with the five that all of a sudden nothing was going right. Everything was in turmoil. Yeah, and um, they, they couldn't be brought back from Otherworld at all. They could. Their bodies could, but their mind and personalities were not the same. Yeah. They were a completely different person. Um, and that was really the only place that they've been affected. 
But if you take out one of the five, then none of it works anymore. Mm -hmm. Because you have to have the five to make the whole process work. Right. But I feel like that they they've cheapened death because they've gone through and they've brought back every mutant essentially that has ever lived, except for probably Forget Me Not, because <laughs> no one remembers he was alive. Um, they brought back every mutant that has ever died, and so every mutant that has ever died. I mean, one you're talking about Genosha from the 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 Morrison run where he had the giant tricentinal thing just basically wipe out all of Genosha, <laughs> but you're talking millions of mutants. That are now back. And it's just, it's cheapened death. It's cheapened, I think death in comic books cheapens the storyline. I, I do too. Uh, um, I think it's just a ploy to sell more books. Um, like right now, Marvel's really pushing X Factor number 10 uh -huh. because there's a significant death. We don't know who dies, but there's a significant. death. Significant. Um, It'll push the story along until they need that character again. Right, and it's the last issue of X-Factor, the numbers are going to go up, and it sets off their next big event, which is the trial of Magneto. Um, but to me, like when you start advertising, someone dies, someone dies, all it tells me is, well, what do you have planned to bring them back? Mm -hmm. Because they're not going to stay dead. I mean, Xavier has died how many times? It's, it's the deaths that aren't advertised that yeah, are more significant. So, but, so we talk about superhero deaths and not being a significant death and mutant deaths not being a significant death. DC books not being significant deaths. They always come back. Let's talk about one book where nobody ever comes back when they die. And it's truly the saddest thing ever. Walking Dead? The Walking Dead. That is like the book. Like, if you ever had any glimmer of hope in your life in, in the... the, the not called zombie walker world of the walking dead say that you fall in love or your your spouse gets pregnant or you got to hold hands with a girl mm -hmm. one of you two is going to die well, and you're going to stay dead and it it makes the story so much more because you love these characters and then they're gone and then they're gone and they're gone gone yeah i mean you, you like the tv show you really grow to to like emotionally care about these characters mm -hmm. and those books where those characters die actually do carry value yes like when they die in the comic books those books actually have spikes in value because they mean something yes it is you, a key the, issue at those that characters aren't coming back those are keys in those moments um like the best example is when Glenn dies in issue 100. Mm -hmm. Now that book is only not worth a whole lot because it was so massively overprinted. Yeah. I mean, there's uh, all these covers for it. And there's foil covers for it. It was a San Diego event. So the book itself is not worth a whole lot. Um, but when there's just so many ways that you can look at the comic book and when someone died that you cared about, you just died with them. Um, and it just changed the way comics, you looked at comics. Mm -hmm. Like, sometimes death is okay to stay dead. Create a new character. Um, I mean, it, it really does. It Because a lot of times it does enhance the story, but then when you bring them back, it just negates everything. Uh, and my biggest example of that is actually in the, the screen world. Uh, when they brought Coulson back in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., I was so mad. Yeah. Because the events of Avengers would not worked had Coulson lived. Right. They wouldn't have come together as a team. That's the whole reason they decided to work together. Right. It cheapened, it cheapened his death. Deaths in comic books and superhero stuff, or even in, the, even in the movies, when someone dies, like if they bring Tony Stark back after Endgame, or yeah, after Endgame, mm -hmm. how will the fans truly react? Now, if they brought back Tony Stark as some kind of AI... It's a little different. It's a little different because Tony Stark did have the mental capacity to find a way to download his mind. Mm -hmm. And then he could just maybe be interacting with Riri Williams through an Iron Man costume. Right. That would be different. But his death was so impactful that if you bring him back in any way capacity, it was, you cheapen that moment. It was the one chance. That was the one chance that Strange saw to save the, the universe. Right. And so, like, when it comes to deaths in comics, if it's Marvel or DC, 
and their popular characters know they're coming back. Uh, they're not going to stay dead. Marvel won't allow them to stay dead because Disney won't create confusion. Uh, so nobody's off limits to die. Nobody's off limits to come back. Um, so you have to understand that. But So that's why I think a lot of people gravitate towards some of the indie books. Because when characters die in the indie books, they typically stay dead. Yeah. Um, and Walking Dead is the best example of that. You'll go through uh, Robert Kirkman's run and you fall in love with these characters. But like when Glenn dies in issue 100... You know, he finds out he's going to have a baby, and, I mean, he's just happy. That was rough. They're fixing, Which, to, they're fixing to move to another community so they can more safely raise their child. And then he just... <laughs> dead. Uh, and it, even in the, the, the TV show, like, when, they, when they, they introduced Negan in that moment, and he kills uh, Abraham, mm -hmm. you're like, oh, thank God. Thank God. It's not going to be Glenn because I didn't like Abraham as much. Right. And then he just turned around and bashes Glenn's head into the ground too. And I'm like, no. Oh, it was so sad because Glenn was one of the most likable characters in both the comic book and the TV show. Mm -hmm. Like you, you wanted him to live. And I don't know. Deaths are more significant when they actually stay dead. Yes. So as a collector point of view... Pick up the death. If you're a flipper, flip it quick. It's it's not going to hold its value, most likely. But who picks up the mantle of, of that character during that time? That is the book to buy. If there's who's going to be the next Captain America, who's going to be the next Wolverine, who's going to be the next Superman, who's going to be the next Batman, those are the books that you want to pick up. Because most likely they could be a first appearance, mm -hmm. they could be a first costume, they could be a first title change. That's a whole other story for another day. Yeah. But significantly speaking, pick up the comic books that whoever's picking up the mail. There you go. There you go. Good talk. Good talk. Okay, guys. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, be sure to like, subscribe, uh, hit that notification bell. All the things help us out a ton. And don't forget about our new contest. We're beginning, going to be giving away this Venom 3 Molina cover 9.8. It's signed by Donny Cates and Ryan Stegman as soon as we hit 1,500 subscribers. So get all your buddies to uh, head on over to our channel and subscribe. Because you want a chance to win. You do. So thank you guys, and we'll see you next time. Bye.